verse 25. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that speak on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. May the Lord add his blessings on these words. Two Sundays ago, we discuss the topic, be careful, be careful, and we did say that in this life there are many things that one should be extremely careful about, one should be very careful of the company he or she keeps. Let me repeat that. We should be careful of the company we keep. Because some companies are not the right mix for us as children of God. If you are, have associated yourself with a person that would lead you astray and lead you in trouble. This is the wrong company. If you have associated yourself with a person whose mind is corrupt, that's the wrong company. We need to associate ourselves with those who would who would elevate us, those who would enhance our condition or situation, those who would advise us aright and lead us aright. These are the kind of people we should associate with. Today we are living in a don't perish world. You hear the phrase so frequently, I don't care. I don't care if you love me or not. I don't care if you accept what I am doing or not. I don't care if my attitude is not becoming or not. I just do not care. But we as children of God, we ought not to adopt such attitude. We need to care. We need to care about what God says. We always have to go back to the word of God and find out what God says when we are tempted. We need to rely on the word of God to find out what God is saying when we are going through temptation. So we have to care. When we are being tried, we need to rely on the word of God to see what God says, what attitude we should adopt in our trials. We need to care. When some word is tempting us and harassing us, when the neighbor is not too friendly and he is harassing us, cutting his grass and uh, throwing it on our lawn. We need to find out how God will react. We need to care. I remember coming from my house that day and uh, I saw the neighbor, he doesn't live there, he was building his house there for quite
quite a while, but I don't know if he gets in trouble or not. But the house is there, and uh, but he comes every now and then, and he cleans around. But the neighbor next door, because he saw the bush by the man's house, he cut all his palm and all his grass, and he put it just in front of the neighbor's house on the grass. So when I passed, I saw the, the neighbor, the one that has the, the house, unfinished house, picking up the neighbor's trash and putting it back in his driveway. <laughs> We need to care. Because how is it you cut your grass? You cut your, your, your palms. You cannot put it in a garbage bag, chop it small enough to put it in a garbage bag, but you can put it at the neighbor. So the neighbor gave him back his trash. We need to care. That's the world that we live in. Sometimes your neighbors get on your case and you need to ask God, what should I do in such situation? We need to ask the Lord the question. Don't you hear him ask his name? give so much thought on how we will survive in this world. Everybody is crying out and carry their water bill to my tenant and uh, her water bill has escalated. She was paying $50 now. It is $176. And she's crying out. You all put them there. She's crying out. But I'm saying that even though the water bill has gone up, we need to depend on the Lord. Amen. I heard Pastor Wood preaching this morning and I, and I am in agreement with him. I do not depend on any politician. I depend, my survival depends on the Lord. Yes. Let them carry up the water bill. Let them carry up the light bill. Let them carry up the bus fare. I must survive. God takes care of me. We need to care. We need to care about what God says. God says, don't you worry. If I take care of the birds, of the sparrows that fly around, that are in the grass and in the trees, they do not work. But God takes care of them. Look at the lily in the field. They do not toil. But look at how beautiful they are. God takes care of them. Yes. What about you? Yes. God takes time to shape you. God takes time to mold you. Yes. God takes time to make you. And when he finished, he stepped back and he says, he looked at you and he says, it is good. Yes. Amen. And the son says that I am Wonderfully and fearfully made. Yes. God took time to shape me. Yes. I don't know about you, but I know God, when God made me, He said that's a special piece. Amen. So He cares. And He told me, don't worry. I will take care of you. He speaks when, with authority, assurance, and affection. His words were piercing, pertinent, and powerful. 
we better be careful that we do not pay an inattentive ear to his words. God cares and God is asking us to be careful. Then we spoke about, we said to take an example from those in the past that were careless. The second phrase in the verse says, For if they escape not who refuse him that spoke on earth. In other words, they reap the fruits of their carelessness. We said the children of Israel demonstrated their carelessness in every form and fashion. God spoke to the Israelites through Moses and the rest of the prophets, but the children of Israel refused to listen. They rebelled against everything God stands for. And so there are some believers, some Christians, that do not care what God stands for. They would rebel against God, no matter what God says, they will rebel against God. But God is saying, as children of mine, you need to care. Yes. They worship idols. They disobeyed God. They disobeyed stone and killed the prophets. They sacrificed the children unto Baal. The prophets constantly sounded notes of warning to them, yet they continued in adultery and idolatry. They continued to express, oppress the poor, the widows, and the fatherless. When God spoke by Moses and the prophets, the people would not hearken to his voice. So they were constantly drawing down punishment unto themselves. They were careless in their attitudes. They were careless in their behaviors. They were careless in their actions. And so they did not escape the divine punishment of God. My brothers and my sisters, I need you to know this morning that sin does not go unpunished. God has vowed he will punish sin. Do you think that you are more privileged than the Israelites? Do we think that we are more privileged than them? Look at the scripture and tell me frankly, honestly, and intelligently, do we think we can escape? Do we know any way of escape? If the Israelites who refused to hear the voice of Moses and the prophets on earth did not escape, how can we escape? if we refuse to listen to the voice of God from heaven. The writer of Hebrews does not know any way of escape. Hear him in chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. You have shut the only door of escape by refusing to hear Jesus. He is the only way. There is no other way given among men whereby we can be saved by the name of Jesus. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He stands between you and God, between you and hell. There is no way of escape. Let us look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 2. Verses 1 to 3. It says, Therefore, we 
ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? He asked the question, how shall we escape? If the Israelites did not escape, do you know any way of escaping? The writer of Hebrews does not know any way of escaping. The Israelites did not escape the judgment of God when they refused to listen to those that spoke on earth. And the writer here in Hebrew is asking, how shall we escape if we refuse to listen to him that spoke from heaven? How shall we escape? There are many reasons for our carelessness and refusal to listen. First, self-reliant wisdom which is too proud to hear the word of God. You see, men are now so educated and they believe that they are so knowledgeable that they do not want to hear God. Some have even go, gone to the point where they would say there is no God. The more knowledge they accumulate the more or the further they drift from God. I think I told you the story of a young boy that went to university. His mother quit every cent she had to, take, to send him to university. But the mother warned him before he left, son, when you receive your education, do not forget God. He said, no, mother, I will never forget God. God has done too much for me to forget God. So when he arrived on compass, he wrote his mother and uh, told his mother that he arrived safely. And he praised God for journeying mercy. And every now and then he would write his mother and would tell his mother he's, he's thankful that fewer and fewer and at a larger distance and then in his letters he finally wasn't mentioning God he would write the mother God was nowhere to be found on the letter and eventually he stopped writing the letters stopped coming the mother was concerned and her heart was broken because she knew how she brought him up in the fear and in the knowledge of the Lord. And one day she heard a knock at the door. When she opened the door, it was her son in velvet suit and his hat, you know, match and his shoes matching. And as the mother embraced him, the first thing the mother says, Son, what has happened? Why your letter?
Satan stopped coming and why you were not mentioning God. And he said to the mother, since I attended the university and I attended the lectures, I realized that this God that people are talking about is just a myth. There is no God. And the mother was so disappointed, she burst in tears and she went in her room and shut the door. She had no more conversation.